so I was wrong. It wasn't Michelle and Stu. That was a fake ass couple. It was Bianca and Chosis. But Bianca, have you not learned nothing from Mary J. Blige songs? She wrote 50 Lem songs on that. You can't make no niggas stay with you like that, girl. <laughs> It's your favorite favorite and I'm back. I know you missed me because I missed me too. <laughs> we are back y'all for another episode review of Marriage Boot Camp this season 14 episode 5 Dirty Little Secrets. Um, church announcements as always if you have not done so just yet go ahead subscribe to my channel before you leave let me know you stop by give me a thumbs up thumbs down and hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content y'all this episode was good but Bianca for real though baby has Mary J Blige songs not taught you nothing at all she got 50 them songs thousands of them that you can have got you some goddamn strength or something from by now to leave this nigga chosen but you know we finna go ahead and get into this y'all i didn't come to you last week with a review for it my bad i really do apologize y'all i really do but Hopefully y'all are ready for this review, so let's get into it, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all, so we are starting off with Michelle and Stu. Now, last week she expressed to him that she felt like he wasn't affectionate enough. He wasn't kissing her in the mouth first thing in the morning with his funky ass goddamn breath. And that was really irritating her. It was getting on her nerves. Now, Stu says he was... He realized, well, he didn't realize that she had such a problem with him not being affectionate and this, that, and the other. He felt like he was affectionate enough. And like he say, bitch, I be trying to hold you at night and cuddle with you and shit like this. You be talking about you hot. You don't want to cuddle and shit like that. So what the hell you expect the nigga to do? He like, you know what? I realized that I wasn't making you, you know, feel like I was there enough for you. I wasn't affectionate enough for you. Whoop, whoop, yada, yada, yada. At the same damn time. What about a nigga like me feeling? It's like, I'm steady to trying to be there for you and, and this, that, and the other. Like, and you mad because I don't kiss you in the mouth first thing in the morning with my funky ass breath? Bitch, you want to cuddle or you want dragon breath? Like, it's a pretty goddamn clear ass choice. But I would take that's just me though. But at the same time, I kiss my about we don't tongue in the mouth first thing in the morning. Oh no, I don't want them kind of problems. But I kiss him, because that's my husband. We've been together a long ass goddamn time, but no, I, I, I feel you. I'm not going to tongue you down in the morning. But y'all get what the hell I'm saying. Anyway, that's them. Then we got um, CeeLo and Shawnee. They're in the kitchen talking. And CeeLo tells Shawnee, you know, Shawnee, I realized that with you, you're not really talkative in the mornings. I be having a whole lot of shit to say, and you don't be having nothing to say. Shawnee said, look here, nigga, you be tripping in the morning. You be mad, you be in a goddamn attitude, you be sideways and shit, and I be trying to talk to you, and you either ignore me, you got a goddamn attitude, ain't nobody got time for that goddamn shit. Shawnee, I feel you. My husband is the same goddamn way. He wake up in the morning and he mad. He mad at the air because he got to breathe it. He mad at the ground because he got to walk on it. He 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 mad at the toilet because he got to piss in it. He's just mad in the morning, first thing in the morning. He's just mad. So I feel you, girl. You learn, leave this nigga alone. Unless he wake up and he happy go lucky. Hey, other than that, bitch, do your thing. Leave that nigga alone till he feel like he got want to talk. I feel you, Shawnee. Mine's is the same damn way. So the couples are all chilling and Dr. Ish comes in with another exercise for them to do. This is an exercise in social media and dealing with different bloggers and things like that. This is basically an exercise reflecting on different shit that they done put out there in social media and basically what you finna be held accountable for, how you pass and come back and affect your relationship now. Whoop de whoop, yada, 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 right? So they started off with CeeLo. A blogger asked, asked CeeLo if his career was more important than his relationship. CeeLo straight up said, sir, leave me alone. And I feel you on that. I, I would have been to say, look here. Mind your motherfucking business, sir. Move right along. Child at an ass, Johnson asked, why do you always look so miserable and unhappy in your goddamn pictures? The Puerto Rican princess, she stood up. Dust the show off, bitch, because of this. Because I'm money. I give you money. I look like money. I talk like money. I smell like money. So you tell them hoes, get off my knee. <laughs> she was goddamn. Y'all know Johnson. I love her, but I can't stand her goddamn ass. That's Johnson for your ass, though. 
They asked Bianca about a post she had put up talking about really get to know a person, like really, really know a person before you start to commit yourself to them and shit like that. And they asked Chose this, like, how do you feel about her basically posting stuff like that? He was like, look here, I know who she is. And she was like, yeah, he knows the real me as well. That's why sometimes I have to tone it down because I can be, get to be, you know, too much for him. Some shit like that she was saying. They asked Styles P about a tweet he put out saying something like, why when you're in the media do you have to put it out there that you're gay? Something in that effects that he said. Styles P owned up to that shit. He was like, look here, if I said something back then that offended somebody, that's my apology. That's who I was then. That's not who I am now. But if you check a nigga motherfucking references out, you will know <laughs> I ain't who the hell I used to be, god damn it, and I'm still trying to be the man that I want to be right goddamn now. Check a nigga out and you'll know that shit. They asked Stu about pictures he got with a bunch of different bitches on it. He's talking about he would never want to do nothing to hurt his relationship with Michelle A. They asked Michelle A how she feel about the pictures. Child, Michelle A said, because it was one picture he was taking with this, with this one chick, and she was kind of, you know, tubing it up a little bit, just trying to show off a little, you know, body, yaddy, yaddy. I ain't mad at you, bitch, hey. And he was trying to rest his hand somewhere, but she had a lot of ass, you know what I'm saying? So he just kind of rested it right on top of the, you know, Top of the ass with the lower part of the back. Wasn't nothing bad about it. I didn't think it was. But Misha Lego say, well, he got she had a whole lot of ass. And um, I don't have a whole lot of ass. And so he didn't know where to put his hand. So yeah. I'm like, girl, if you don't show up with the goddamn dumb shit, well, I mean, what you it was an innocent picture anyway. But Misha Lake, shut up. That sounded stupid, girl. Why did you say that? That sounded stupid. Anyways. They asked Shawnee how does she feel taking a back seat to CeeLo's career. And I like Shawnee answer. Shawnee was like, look here, sometimes a relationship, there's a back seat, there's a front seat. That's also a passenger side. I don't ride in the back seat of shit, bitch. I'm on the passenger side of my nigga. God damn it. And if you want to know, God damn it, because I done told your goddamn ass so, motherfucker. They done asked Bianca ass about another tweet she done put out saying something about I must be stupid or some shit like that. Cha! And of course, I was with Jocelyn like, bitch, no, you didn't. Why? That's why y'all need to be careful what y'all put out here on goddamn some bitch. You can't be saying one thing about a nigga one day and then back it up and you and this nigga together and you just want the world to be okay with it. I'm just saying, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it at that. But, um, Chose is going to put his arm around a girl and say, you know what, this is my dummy. And she laughs. I was like, wow, this nigga got mind control over this bitch. You just gonna laugh at it like it ain't, it ain't nothing. She tries to explain, no, child, then that's what it is. This blogger was like, can you explain this picture of this bitch right here and why she got your necklace on? Chosen was like, oh, that was a long time ago. Bianca was like, yeah, that's when we was broken up. We went together, blogger say, oh, bitch, really? Because I reached out to the bitch. She said that y'all is actually together, that you, her nigga, she your bitch. Bianca over there like, wow, word up though. Whoa, but it wasn't like she was mad though. She was just like chilling off of it. Charles was like, um, no comment. Nigga, no comment. What what that post the heck got there me? I'd have thought, had it been your auntie, we had furniture moving in that bitch. What you mean no comment, nigga? Is this something that I had not known about that I was supposed to know about it? Like, what the fuck is going on? But apparently, Bianca already knowed about the shit. And she was cool with it. She was like, no. What matters is we get together now and we together and that's what matters. I said, oh, wow. Oh, you just gonna let it go? Like, okay. I mean, okay. After the press conference is over, all the journalists and the bloggers or whatever, they leave, they done left out and all the couples is left, right? Dr. Ish is talking to all the couples. He straight out of ass, Bianca and Chosen, like, okay, now what the fuck going on? Because y'all got a lot of niggas sitting up here looking at y'all goddamn ass sideways now. Like, y'all together, y'all is, y'all ain't, y'all maybe y'all won't. Like, what the fuck is really going on? She was like, no, we was together, but then we wasn't together. But then we was together and then we wasn't, but we together now. And that's all that matter. He was like, look here, this bitch said this shit last night. So, what that mean? Like, we was together, but we wasn't together. And we was trying to work it out. And we together now. That confused shit out of me. Later on, Johnson goes and hollers at Bianca. Y'all already know Johnson with that pimp shit. She like, look here. 
you can't let this nigga lead you on. You got to tell this nigga, like, look here, this is what it's going to be, what it's going to be, how it's going to be, how it's going to be, what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Let this nigga know if you're going to be with me, you need to call this bitch. You need to let this bitch know right goddamn now. And if you don't let this bitch know right goddamn now, it's going to be a problem. You hear me? Now, I'm giving you the wings so you can go ahead and fly and do what the fuck you got to do with it. She hyping Bianca ass up. Little do she know, Bianca already got a plan of her motherfucking own. Now, Dr. Ish goes and talks with Chosis. Judge Toller goes and talks with Bianca. Now, Dr. Ish is trying to get to the bottom of the shit with Chosis. Like, look here, my nigga. What's up? What's good? Are you and Bianca together or what? Chosis says they're working towards being friends. Meanwhile... Bianca is telling Judge Toller that she's in love with Chosis. When they first got together, it wasn't like that. He used to wine her and dine her. It only became this way recently. Now, her thing is, she loved a nigga. She done spent $200 on an Uber to go beat the brakes off a bitch, so she loved this nigga. And as we know now, she's pregnant by him, so they, they wasn't faking being together. The thing about it is... CeeLo broke that shit down real good, too. Like he said, he got one bitch that he got in check, which is a white girl back at the crib. Plus, he got Bianca ass, who's still gonna wild up, and she gonna be okay with the shits like it is. Chose has got it made in motherfucking shape. It's Bianca ass that needs to be the one to be like, look here. I don't want to deal with your ass or this extra bullshit or none of that shit either. You're going to be with me or you not. You know what I'm saying? Judge Tola gives her some good ass goddamn old school advice. I'm tired of sisters taking a back seat just to be along for the ride so they can get whatever. Like, that shit ain't cool. It's not cool. And that is exactly what Bianca is subjecting herself to. And it was... I was feeling bad for her. I really was. Because she didn't want to look bad in front of everybody. Although you could clearly see she was very embarrassed. I don't give a damn. She was embarrassed and the shit hurt. It goddamn hurt. Especially for the bitch saying that they together. And she just said this shit last night. And you here with this nigga now? Bitch, what? What? But... She was trying to save face, you know what I'm saying, keep it together, whoop de whoop and all of this, whatever, right? So, after um, Bianca and, you know, chose us a gun, done talking to, you know, Judge Toller and um, Dr. Ish, they escape and go into the bathroom and unmike themselves. They get to whispering and talking and shit, probably conspiring a little story or whatever that they want to come out and they want to tell everybody. Meantime, in between time, you got the rest of the couple sitting over here talking. Now, they like, look here. What the fuck is really going on? Because of Ramia, uh, well, when, when, when this nigga said this, she said this, we don't found that the bitch said this. Like, what the fuck is really going on? They trying to figure this shit out. Johnson was on the main one on goddamn crusade. I need to know what the fuck is going on. So, child, they, they was in that hold up in that goddamn bathroom for a minute. When they finally come out the bathroom, Bianca and Charles, they both trying to play it off. Like, hey, what's up, camera? Like, ain't nothing happened. Everybody looking at me like, nigga, mm-hmm. The fuck was y'all in there talking about? What the fuck is going on? You know what I'm saying? Word up. Word up. Ain't that what y'all say in New York? Word up. What the hell is going on? Chose is dances around the whole situation like we was here. Just a bunch of bullshit. Shawnee was like, look here, I need you to speak proper English, my little young man. Is that your girlfriend or not? He said he can't give no yes or no answer. She says as long as they together, he with her, and that's all that matter. Judge Dr. Ish is like, no, I'm 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 not I'm not doing this here. Bullshit. You done already had a whole goddamn girlfriend before you came here. But you pretending like you cool with her and y'all together, but you really not together. This is what it was. Because see, Dr. Ish was like, look here. When he got all the couples together at the end, he sent Bianca and Chosis, the babies to their room, had the rest of the couples decide whether or not they wanted Bianca and Chosis to stay. Now, they were sitting there, were talking, and they, they gave me some clarity about it. Because at first, I was like, what the fuck is they doing? Like, are they together? Are you not together? Like, what the hell is really going on? What it is was, Bianca... Figured, okay, look here. I know he fucking with this white bitch and I don't like her, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell this nigga, look here. We can go on this show, get the bag, and hopefully we can go through counsel, work on our relationship, and see where it's going to be at with me and you. That's what Bianca was hoping would happen. Meanwhile, Chosen is only thinking about the bag. He got him a whole nother bitch at the house. That's, he got him a show thing back at the house. 
you are a, 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 you a for sure thing too. <laughs> In his mind, you a for sure thing too. But the white bitch at that, she the for sure show sure thing. But she was hoping to come on here, get the nigga and the bag, and the nigga's just trying to get the bag. That's some fucked up shit, y'all. That's real messed up. So, basically, they leave it off from there. Bianca and Chosen's both looking scared as hell. Because, like Styles P said, you know, obviously she loved the nigga because she drove $200 worth of fucking Uber to go beat up a bitch over his goddamn ass. So, you know she loves him. But at the same time, is he even worth trying to keep on here to work towards a relationship with her when he got him a whole nother bitch at the house? Like, what? I get it. Y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. I promise I'm going to be on time with the rest of them. I swear for Lord I am. I swear for Lord I am. Chop it up to just... I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> so I work a lot, and a mama a lot, and a wife a lot. And I'm tired a lot, and I clean a lot. But here, yeah, hopefully y'all like this review. Um, As always, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If you join me on my live this past Friday... Thank you so much. We had a good ass goddamn time, and we're gonna do it again this Friday night. Live at about 9 10 sip and chill, y'all. <laughs> Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.